to our evening. Thank you for taking the time um, to join us um, this evening. Um, it really is much appreciated. We will keep it succinct, um, but hopefully the information that we share with you is really quite useful um, over the course of the next few uh, months as we uh, move into year nine. We, what is really quite a pivotal year um, for all of our students uh, in year nine. It is a year, of course, that they will pick their options for GCSEs and there'll be lots of more information that comes to you via Mrs. Reid, uh, uh, Mr. Ver Mac as well. Um, but it is worth bearing that in mind um, at this point, I would say, as your students go into their lessons, they start to build relationships and start to really think a little bit more deeply about what it is they would like to study um, at GCSE over the next couple of years. Um, we talk quite um, openly uh, about uh, having a seven year journey at Roding Valley, and that is because we have really high aspirations for all of our students. We don't see year 11 as the end of their time at Roding Valley. We have the aspiration for all of our students to stay on with us and do BTECs and A-levels, although we do accept that that isn't right for everyone in every circumstance. We do what we can to support those students along the way. And this year, our year 13 students did exceptionally well at A-level. We're really very proud of them. Um, a high number of them went off to Oxbridge. Um, we had a high number of students who successfully gained places on degree apprenticeships, which is phenomenal. We also had students who joined the world of work as well. We're equally proud of each and every one of our students. I think probably the most pleasing thing was that so many of them, the vast majority, got into their programme of choice, to their employment of choice, to their university of choice. And really, our job is to support them along the way to help get there with correct information, advice and guidance. So we really are delighted for each and every one of those students. I just wanted to take a, a few moments to uh, reiterate the type of school um, that we are. We are now completely oversubscribed uh, across the board at Roding, which is a really privileged position to be in. Our values now mean as much as to us as they ever have done of aspiration, respect and endeavour. And that's between students uh, and teachers and uh, vice versa. Also between parents and staff and vice versa. And we know how important it is to have those open channels of communication. So if you do have any uh, questions um, for us, please do get in touch with Miss Reid, your head of year, or indeed your child's form tutor, and we'll be um, absolutely uh, delighted to get back to you and clarify any issues that um, or any misconceptions or just any queries that you might have about your child and their education, particularly uh, in year nine. Um, I also do want to talk about attendance. Um, there is probably no clearer correlation, uh, certainly that I've come across, between the correlation between uh, attendance and educational outcomes, attainment at GCSE and also at A-level. Um, whereas 90% in an exam might seem quite a good mark, when it comes to attendance, 90% isn't particularly good. We're looking for an absolute minimum, really, of 95, 96%. Uh, and we know that anything less than that really does have a negative impact, ultimately, on outcomes at GCSE. Um, so I really wanted to flag that with you again and just, just reiterate that. And that was really stark again in our GCSE results this year. Those students who did have a good attendance achieved exceptionally well and considerably better than those students who weren't in as frequently. So please do uh, endeavour to send your child in if they're not feeling 100% but you think they can battle through then do send them in, we'll look after them and of course we will let you know if they if they are feeling poorly at school of course. Uh, and also just a plea uh, as well just to follow those um, uh, processes for calling in if your child's not well just so that we're aware of it and we can, um, we can dip, mark the register accordingly. OK, I'm very shortly going to hand over to a number of other people. You're going to hear from the deputy head teachers. You're going to hear from head of year, Miss Reid, uh, amongst other people. And hopefully they're going to give you a bit more of an insight into all things year nine uh, and help to answer some of those questions that you might have about uh, this next year. So thank you once again for joining. We really do appreciate you giving up your time. Um, and uh, I will hand you over now to the next person. Well, hello everyone. My name is Sam Smith, Deputy Head. I'm in charge of culture and ethos of the school. And uh, I think the first thing I was going to start by saying is that we are very, very proud of the Roding community. We very much feel as if we are a community school in a number of ways. First of all, I think we've got a really strong community at the school, talking about the learners and the adults in the building. But secondly, we really feel as if we sit at the heart of the road, uh, of the Loughton community and the local community, and that's also extremely important to us as a school. Um, and community is very important because 
um, a strong community will mean that pupils will be more successful. There's absolutely no doubt about that. And of course, communities need care. Um, and, and that's where really my job uh, is why my job is important, because um, communities need strong rules uh, so that people know uh, what they can and cannot do. Um, and what we think is really important is that um, there are strong and dependable routines for things so that there are no surprises so that when children walk into lessons they know what to expect when they're lining up for assembly they absolutely know what to expect and, and these these routines help um, help us not really need the rules themselves because everybody knows exactly what's expected of them but of course in communities in all communities things do occasionally go wrong and when things go wrong uh, in this community we uh, aim to fix them so when people fall out from time to time we aim to fix those relationships when things go wrong between teachers and pupils when there's a misunderstanding then we aim to fix those relationships and it's relationships at this school which we feel are so important um, and at the center of all of that is the pupil um, and around that sits an extraordinary number of people who are there to support that pupil from the form tutor who is the first port of call for any issues that the pupil has um, and of course from any issues that uh, you know that um, families want to raise that's the form tutor is that should always be the first port of call then there is the, the head of year there is a large um, extended leadership team and senior leadership team in the school who are here to support pupils obviously their teachers are here to support and those relationships are absolutely fundamental to the success of pupils we have a pupil support team who work with pupils to help them to always make the right choices and to help restore things when they've gone wrong and obviously the learning support department will be working with um, a number of pupils to help them to access the curriculum and, and be as successful as they can but even more than that, there is the safeguarding team who are there to make sure that children feel OK, that that uh, that uh, where we've got concerns, they are addressed. The attendance team works to ensure that pupils are here as much as they possibly can. We have pupil voice, which enables pupils to talk about what they think about the school and suggest improvements. There are all of the support staff working in the school from reception team to uh, teaching assistants that are here um, at, at sixth form mentors, which is a program that starts shortly where pupils will be supported by sixth form students. Um, and that's a, a weekly mentoring system. And there are prefects um, further up the school that are, that are there to support pupils when they need it so there's an enormous amount of support but these are all relationships and all of these relationships need care and need restoring they need to, to be established in the first place to main to be maintained as we go along and to be restored if and when things go wrong um as for the rules uh, because it's right to talk about what the rules are. The rules are important. Uh, strong communities need strong rules. Um, Behaviour policies can get very complicated and there can seem like there are really a lot of rules. Most of that is detail. There really are only three rules in this community and they are very straightforward. But if pupils, and I've been saying to, this to pupils all week, if a pupil were to follow these three rules, they would really not be going very far wrong. Clearly, they're here to learn. Each individual pupil is responsible for their own learning. And obviously, if they're behaving in a way that stops them from learning, they're going to be breaking some rules. Similarly, if pe pupil behaviour stops other people from learning, that's going to be a problem. So, you know, it's we are here to allow to, to learn as much as possible, but also to allow other people and to help other people to learn as much as possible. And finally, to show kindness and respect for yourself in the school. And those are the three rules. And everything else follows from those three rules. But if you only keep those three rules in your, in your head, uh, you won't go far wrong. Clearly, everything else comes from that. So, you know, why do we expect pupils to be in school 100% of the time? So they can learn as much as possible. Similarly with punctuality. Uniform is about respect for yourself and for the school. It's also to help us kind of maintain a sense of equality across the school, which we wouldn't have if pupils were in their own clothes. Um, lesson behaviour, uh, clearly, uh, 
uh, good lesson behavior enables good learning to happen. Uh, playground behavior will affect learning in class. It's also about kindness and respect and so on and so forth. And all of these things, all of these things really come from those three main rules. To talk about attendance briefly, um, attendance percentages are strange things because in any other uh, in any other um, activity, if you got 96 percent on a test, for example, you would rightly feel as if you had done extremely well. 96 percent attendance, though, isn't uh, isn't satisfactory. So a pupil with 99 percent attendance across a school year will still have had two days off. And in those two days, they might have missed, they will have missed 12 lessons, they will have missed 12 hours of learning, and they may have missed really crucial things, particularly in those exam years um, where anything that you miss is going to make a difference. 95% attendance, which, you know, again, arguably you might think is, is good, that will be nearly 10 days off in a school year. And really crucially, a pupil with 90% attendance, below which they will be considered persistently absent. If you have 90% attendance, it means that one, when you take into consideration weekends and holidays, plus the time you've taken off, you will, in a school year, spend more time at home than you will at school. And obviously, that is going to affect your ability to learn. And there is a very clear co correlation between absence and underachievement and lack of progress. It's similar for punctuality. If a child was two minutes late for each lesson in an academic year, they would have missed 39 lessons, 39 full lessons, 39 hours of learning, which is over a week of school. So minutes add up, and these things really, really um, are very, very important. You know, in addition, two minutes late into the lesson, you're going to be disturbing the learning for other people as you walk in. So we do expect 100 percent punctuality to school and to all lessons. Pupils have five minutes transition time between lessons. But if pupils are marked late, there will be a 20 minute late detention after school. And punctuality to school is very, very important. Pupils arriving late through the late gate will receive a 20 minute detention at lunchtime every day. As I said, good communities need strong rules and strong routines. Um, that's everything that I wanted to talk about this afternoon. Uh, thank you very much for listening. Um, and uh, I look forward to speaking with you soon. Hello there, my name is Miss Larkin. I'm the Deputy Head Teacher and I oversee Curriculum Progress Teaching and Learning. And what I'd really like to talk to you about today is how important Year 9 is as a springboard into the GCSE curriculum. Now, you probably already know this, but our curriculum is a five year curriculum. And it's really important to note that GCSEs don't just start when they set foot in Year 10. In fact, we've been preparing them for their GCSE content from Year 7. Now, year nine is an integral year in this process because in year nine, your son or daughter will get to choose what GCSEs they'd like to continue and they'd like to add into their curriculum when they get into year 10 and into year 11. So it's so important for them to get this message that whatever they do now is massively important and they're building the core knowledge and skill set that is very much needed to be successful at GCSE. And just so you know, and a lot of parents know this already, but our GCSEs are now graded at nine to one, nine being a double A star. Um, and then obviously they go down as you go through. A grade four is what we call a standard pass and a grade five is what we call a strong pass. So there's no more A star to G. I will also say as well that there is an increased focus um, on challenge at GCSE now. 
there and I've put no coursework because in the majority of subjects there isn't any coursework and there is a big spag spelling punctuation and grammar focus as well and just while I'm talking about GCSE I know it seems like a long way off now but the A-levels were also reformed a few years ago and again coursework was stripped out of many of those qualifications but it does remain in some key qualifications especially the vocational ones so what I'd really like to make a point of to our year nines is that there's no quick catch-up in year 11 um, and there's no way you can just wait to year 11 and just start cramming. It's so important that our year nines understand that. And in fact, when they do move on to their options, um, our year nines will need to understand that they will start their official GCSE content in the May, after the May half term, sorry, of this academic year. So it's all very, very exciting. So just a couple of bits then about the options process itself, because I know that many parents want to know about this. Before I do mention the options process, what I would like to say is that there'll be plenty of information available about the options process as we get closer or, or uh, as we progress, I should say, through this academic year. So there will be an options evening in February for all parents and carers to attend. Miss Reid will be writing to parents over the next coming months to give you more information on that. We also always launch our bespoke options microsite that will contain all the information that you and your child will need about making the correct options for them. So please don't worry, I'm gonna give you a quick whistle stop tour, but there's so much more info coming your way. So at Riding Valley, we have four pathways to success and you can see them on the screen there. We strongly believe that the students, when they are put on their pathways, they are put there so that they can make as much progress as possible by the time they leave us. Some of them will leave us at the end of year 11, but we hope that the majority will stay with us to continue their seven year journey into sixth form. And our four pathways are broken into the ones that are on the screen. So pathway one is for normally our triple scientists. Nationally, that's the top 25% of the, of the cohort and of the country. Pathway two is our more capable of traditional EBAC route. So they'll be the students that won't do triple science, they'll do double science, but they will do an MFL, so a modern foreign language, a humanities, and then have two other options. We would also like our pathway two students to really strongly consider doing computer science as our pathway ones. We'd like to push them into that as well, but obviously it depends on their interests. And pathway three, it means they will do a humanity, so history or geography, but they don't have to do a language. So instead, they get their three options choices there. Our pathway for students, that is a very, very small cohort of students. There are students that will do extra English and maths in place of one of their options. Some of, the, some of those students in that very small cohort will also do what we call a functional skills GCSE to allow them to access the curriculum. But like I said, that's a very small cohort. Now, just in case you're wondering, how do you actually end up knowing about what pathways your student or your son or daughter, sorry, will be put on, please don't worry. All of that will be communicated during that options evening that will be followed up with a letter that will inform you what pathway we believe your child should be on to make as much success as possible. If you'd like to get some more information in the background, though, you can start to look at our options microsite from last academic year, 23 to 24. You can find that on our website. So if you hover over the high school menu, and you click on options 23-24, it'll, ta it'll take you straight to our bespoke microsite. It's been made by myself and my options team, and you can have a look through all the different subjects that we offer at GCSE. You can also have a look at the criteria that you might need to be successful in those, the course content, etc. It's a brilliant website. Of course, you'll get your own version. So we'll start working on your version of that in December of this year, and you'll start to be shared all that information in the January and February of next year. Thank you so much for listening. I really appreciate it. Year nine is a very exciting year. It's a very serious year, though, as well, but they do start to get some to make some choices about their curriculum. Thank you very much for listening. Hello, everybody. My name's Tony Taylor. I'm the Senko here at Riding Valley High School. And I'm going to be speaking to you today about SEND at the school and how we manage young people with SEND and how we provide support. So any young person with a special educational need or disability is on the school SEND register. That contains information about the young person along with three bespoke individualised teaching strategies called sacrosanct strategies that are given to staff that we expect staff to use every lesson, every time. They are what staff should be using to adapt to teaching to ensure that young people can access what is happening in the classroom. 
we know through uh, research around SEND, through research from Ofsted, through research from the IOA, through a range of sources, that high quality teaching is the key to progress. And having young people in the classroom being taught by specialist staff has the highest level of impact and means that they make the most progress. And that's why we ensure through the SEND register that all of our staff are aware of the needs of our students and the strategies that they must use. But we do also acknowledge that there are numerous times when we may need to use further bespoke interventions around um, academic, around social skills, around behaviour skills, around coping mechanisms and a wide range of things. And this is all part of the graduated approach that is in the SEND code of practice from the government. So what we do in this case is we use the assess, plan, do, review cycle. So we assess the need, what is it that a young person um, has in terms of a barrier and then we plan the intervention along with uh, yourself so you know what's happening. We then do it and we review it. If we get to the end of it and the outcomes that we set at the beginning around what we want to see change has happened, then we'll end it. If it hasn't, we'll look at it again and say, well, actually, is there something that can have more impact? If something hasn't had impacts, we wouldn't look to continue it because that's not doing the job that we want it to do. We'd need to find something else. And it's all around clear outcomes being set for that intervention and how we then measure the success. And a key part of all of this is working with you guys as parents and carers. This is about a chance to meet Terminal, the member of the learning support team, to discuss any concerns that you have around SEN, around provision, around the way that your young person is able to access school and access the curriculum. The dates for the autumn term are the 24th of October for year seven, 23rd of October for year eight, and the 22nd of October for year nine. The structure that we follow is what's working well, moving on to what's not working well, and then we use that to action plan moving forward and to look at the sacrosanct strategies and any changes that we need to put in place. The cornerstone to all of this is working together with you guys to ensure that we, the needs of all our young people are met, but more importantly, the needs of your child are met. So one of the key areas that we look at is literacy support and reading is a key part of what we do here at Rodian Valley. And we have a very clear whole school literacy policy that includes pre-teaching of vocabulary, the teaching of what we call etymology, so the meaning of words and parts of words. Um, we then have interventions like thinking reading, which is uh, an evidence-based program for young people where there's a, a gap of more than two years between their chronological age and their reading age. It's a very successful program, generally delivered to year seven and ten at the moment, and then uh, we work through the school from there. Um, and we will be in contact if your child needs that kind of support. We also use the Hertz for Learning Reading Fluency program for young people who need him to help with fluency and comprehension. And that's all based on the data from the baseline testing that was done right at the very beginning of um, the year when your child came in for those uh, testing days. At home, you have things like Readly, which is a fantastic app that has lots of magazines, newspapers, and access to all kinds of uh, things that you can uh, read. You have things like BorrowBox, Message County Council Libraries that have audio books. Audio books are a fantastic way of, of sharing literature with your children. And many of us now also have Amazon Prime accounts, and you have something called Prime Reading where you can access books um, through there. And you can also access audio books and through prime reading you get a certain number of audible credits per year where you can uh, have audio books too and one of the key things i get asked about is homework and for young people especially moving into secondary school it can be quite difficult to have that kind of work ethic around homework and be able to manage your time around homework so the advice we give to parents is around having set routines have a consistent workplace have a set time a consistent time a consistent way of doing things so six o'clock every night is homework time and if your child has difficulties with focus has difficulties with retention then you can use timers to enable your child to be able to manage their time and get them used to working within those clear time limits we can try and incentivize homework. Um, you know, if you get all your homework done tonight, then you can have an extra 10 minutes on the, the Xbox or the PlayStation. You can choose the film for the family film night. You can choose the Saturday night takeaway. Incentivize it and then build from there. So do all your homework today, there's a little incentive for you. Do it all week, there's an incentive for you. It doesn't have to be massive. It doesn't have to break the bank. But just something that your child really enjoys that you can use to say, well, actually, I'm going to encourage the behaviours that I want to see and make homework an expectation. Please feel free to contact us if you need us at any point. We'll be more than happy to speak to you. Thank you for your time this evening.
Hello parents and students, I'm Mr Mia, I'm Assistant Head Teacher for Teaching and Learning. I will talk about some of the things that our teachers are focusing on, but also some of the things that our students can do to make this year really successful for them. So our teachers are teaching against the ACE framework, which is how we make sure our lessons are excellent lessons, taught to the top, and challenging students, keeping them engaged, keeping them creative, assessing them as we go through and adapting the lesson for their needs. We are specifically focusing on adaptive teaching, in particular looking at the into the top, that stretching us to pupils. We have a very able cohort and making sure we push them all the way to the top, the very top of what they can reach and scaffolding and supporting them up to get to that point. Some of what goes on in the classroom includes the following. So for example, our students are often given a teaching learning ambassador and when they have one of these lanyards, they are able to take pride and ownership in their learning. They are an ambassador. So whenever someone walks into the classroom, they get to stand up and talk about what they're doing and what that means and the skill sets that they're gaining. We also encourage students to bring in green pens to every single lesson because we use this as a way for students to assess their own work, to reflect on their own work and to make improvements to their work. So it's really important they have green pens with them along with all the other equipment. Every lesson starts with the do it now and it hooks our students. We know it's really important to start the lesson promptly, to uh, make sure that they are calm and relaxed, that they have um, reduced their cognitive load and that they also go over old work. So quick knowledge tests from the past, knowledge that they can use for that lesson. And we tend to spend about five minutes on that at the start of each lesson. So it's a really good way to get students settled. It's important that they get to lessons on time so they can partake in this. I'm also going to talk about briefly RAG, uh, close the gaps rather, which are really important tools and, and a strategy that we use to fix or close gaps um, that students uh, might have um, throughout their learning journey. So for instance, after assessments, students would receive a yellow sheet and you can see these very easily because they highlight, they sort of stand out in the book. The yellow sheets received from the teacher where the teacher has identified strengths, but also gaps in knowledge and skills that the students can then work on to improve and to close those gaps. They also provide work for how to close those gaps and that's signposted by the teachers. But it's a really quick way to flip through the book and find where those gaps are just to make sure that that's where when we do revision and when we go over old things, we're spending our time and energy looking at the close to gap areas. We teach a ton of revision strategies, tried and tested revision strategies that actually work and um, we teach a few lower down the school but these same strategies such as these are my maths um flip and fold knowledge organizers um the cornell notes um etc all of these we will continue to use right the way through gcsc and a level so they're really powerful revision strategies that we know actually work it's possible to have a look at our curriculum. So on the school website, if you click on the curriculum, you can look at all the skills maps for all of our subjects to see what students are going to be learning each year, but also how that links and builds over the years all the way right up to year 13. So what can we do at home to help our sons and daughters at this really crucial time? Well, Google Classroom is going to be really key here. Google Classroom is what we use to centralize all of our home learning or homework. Um, all of our homework or home learning from all of our subjects will be posted as assignments in Google Classroom. For more information on Google Classroom, there is a tab called the Home Learning tab on the school website, and there's a Home Learning booklet attached. So please feel free to go through that if you have any further queries. And one thing I would really recommend to students to get a bit more organized with home learning is on Google Classroom to click on the calendar view because it shows you all the assignments due over the course of the week. And it's possible then to organize time a bit better and think about what well, I might do those two subjects on a Monday and those two subjects on a Thursday and those two subjects I might do on a Sunday. And that way it can be managed better rather than you know trying to get all the home learning done right before a Monday morning on a Sunday night, which probably isn't the most useful and probably a bit stressful for students as well. 
homework that is due within a particular day always is uh, assigned and it comes up as an assignment it's called an assignment and those are a homework that has to be submitted and it has a date attached to it anything that is put up online that is just uh, lesson resources for students to read over when they're um, at home or if they've missed a lesson or if they just want to go over old work is called material and it can be posted as material this is not home learning it is just lesson resources and I really encourage students to read through lesson resources and materials well in advance of the lessons. It just makes sure that they're a step ahead of everyone else. It's really important that students hand in their home learning by handing it in. There is a button to hand it in at the top right hand corner. And even if their homework or home learning is in written form, we still expect students to take a picture because then it's all in one place, easy to track and teachers are able to give feedback through home learning as well. Lots of revision resources are available on the school microsite, the revision microsite. It's something that we do always go through st with students just before they do exams. We have revision workshops, which um, they will have this year as well, showing them all the strategies that are tried and tested, always showing them a new strategy that they may not have done before and applying it to some of their subjects so they can then take it home and continue on with the rest. I wanted to talk about two further things, which is bedrock, and reps. So reps is a really, um, bedrock even, is a really important part of our literacy initiative because we know bedrock is about giving students that base of vocabulary that they will use to access all their subjects. And it's a really important benefit. And it's a software that our students will be doing in school with their Chromebooks once a week. And it supports the acquisition and development of that tier one and tier two vocabulary that they can then use in other subjects. A really important way of accessing other subjects. And we know that students who have a wider vocabulary are just more successful in all of their exams. Other reading and writing initiatives at uh, our school include dear time and deal time where we drop everything and read and drop everything and write. And it's really important that students have a reading book with them, something that is age appropriate, that they find interesting, that they can do that once a week. I also wanted to talk about our brand new numeracy initiative called REPS. And so this alongside Bedrock, we do with our Kisses 3 cohorts. So year 7, year 8, year 9. And it stands for real life, everyday problem solving. And I really, really enjoy these. I really find these uh, fun. And I know lots of students find these fun. And what they are, as you can see here, they are real life, everyday sort of problems that they can solve um, and it might be for example that they will do this during form time once a week it might be that they have something um, that talks about having to go to the airport and uh, at 4 p.m however they need to check in beforehand their baggage and they need to consider the allowance um, and whether they have over overgone their allowance and how much they might need to pay for the uh, excess baggage and whether they can pay with their loyalty points and all of these calculations which are quite finicky however they're actually quite fun because they are challenging but not impossible they are quite doable but just requires thinking and being methodical they're also real world problems um, so we've had some examples about trying to catch a train and knowing the timetable for it um, and we might need to catch a bus and a train etc etc to get to the airport on time so various real world real world life um, problems that they can solve it's really handy really useful so those two things numeracy um, through the reps and literacy through bedrock and dear in due times really support our students giving them that strong basis which allows them to access all the other subjects and be successful Okay, and that is it. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I'm sure that together with your ongoing support, we can make this a really successful year for our students. Thank you. Hello and welcome to the Year 9 Information Evening. I'm Miss Reed, the Year 9 Head of Year. 
So the first thing um, I wanted to talk to you about is the Year 9 Form Tutor team, who is a really important team. Um, that your The Form Tutor is the person that your son or daughter sees first thing every single day. Um, so luckily, mo a lot of those are the same as last year, which is really nice for the students because they've got that familiar face. If you refer to the welcome letter, um, the Form Tutor's email addresses will be there, and they should be your first point of call for any queries that you may have. Okay, so the expectations and vision for year nine, we want to provide students with the relevant skills to achieve their highest attainment and to make the progress that they should be in order to meet those target grades at the end of year 11. We want to encourage independence. Um, the students are getting very independent now as they've gone through the first couple of years and they will continue to do so and we will develop that as we go. We want students to become responsible and well-rounded citizens and have aspirations throughout and beyond the school and obviously to work hard to achieve those. So during period one, we run our personal development curriculum. And as you can see on there, there's a lot of different topics that we organise and run through the autumn term. Um, and that also covers um, parts of the parts of relationships, sex and health education um, and PSHE as well. So that runs during period one on a Monday, which is extended for that personal development curriculum. So that runs from 8.30 until 9.25 every Monday. Um, just a really important part of the curriculum that students need to access. OK, career. So during that period one as well, they have a career session. Um, obviously, it's really important, especially um, for this year group now doing their options this year, that students are learning about careers and the different pathways that they would need to take um, in order to reach those careers. So really important aspect of that period one um, as well. Also, we have our literacy runs in period one. So we have a literacy task, which is bedrock, and we have a numeracy task, which was new at the end of last year, which students do one morning a week as well. So really important to build up those core skills and um, that is all going to contribute towards their, their grade at the end of obviously year 11. OK, so key dates, we have our exam week, which is the week beginning the 9th of December. I've already started to prepare students for this and it will be a really important exam week for them because it will give um, curriculum leads an indication of where students are sitting within their subject area. We then, after that, after the, after the Christmas break, we have the parents' evening, which, which will be off the back of that exam week. So we, you can discuss with teachers how um, the students kind of did in their subject. And after that, we have the year nine options evening. So really important year for year nine. They'll be taking their options. They'll be starting their GCSEs after May half term. So the options evening is a really nice evening where students can come in, have a look at all the different subjects that we offer, speak to the teachers um, and find out a little bit more about the GCSE courses. So our positive action for learning framework. So this is our behaviour system. We obviously do have very high expectations of, um, of the students and we expect them to be respectful to obviously staff and other students. We do encourage rewards as well. We want to reward students. That's what we want to be doing. And it should be a six to one ratio of rewards and celebrations. Um, we do involve parents along the way. So we like to send positive and negative um, or positive, ideally, emails. Um, but obviously, we will communicate with you as well if there is any behaviour issues that we need to um, speak to you about. And there will be, will be clear consequences um, for poor behaviour. Oh, OK, so lots of opportunities for students to get involved in this year. And one of the big ones for year nine is the Duke of Edinburgh. So this become this is introduced in year nine, um, which is really exciting. And I know there's going to be lots of students who are wanted, wanting to be getting involved in that um, this year. So I encourage students to sign up for that um, this year. And as you can see on the screen, there are lots of other different things for students to be getting involved in, especially coming up our open morning. We're looking for students um, to be guides and volunteers um, for our open morning and lots of other things on there. I know the Wizard of Oz, they've all, they're auditioning for that already. So that's really exciting. And I know there is a ski trip running um, next year as well. So helping your child make the best start to their GCSE. So it is going to be a quite a tense time and students are probably thinking about that already. There will maybe be a little bit more pressure added to the students. So it's just we just need to be mindful of that um, and they do need to step up to the challenge. It is going to get a little bit more, a little bit more serious now as such. Um, so students will need to be having that in mind. 
And obviously we want you to be involved in the whole process as well, which is what which is you will be, and just speaking to the to your son or daughter about that process. Okay. So attendance, obviously attendance is really, really important. We expect students to be here at least 96% of the time. And it is found out, found that if the students in school, they are going to be doing better in terms of their grades at the end um, of year 11. If you were sitting on 90% attendance, they would actually, students would actually achieve one grade below their target grade, which is not what we want so we do encourage students to obviously attend school as much as they can um, and we're looking for that 96 bracket if not higher so how can we help so we can give them positive reinforcement okay we want to boost their confidence we want to keep them positive we want to celebrate all their successes and we've got a new, we've relaunched our reward system this year which is really exciting set expectations of them make make them feel good and make them believe in themselves it just has to be that which is really important and obviously alongside all of this is the students well-being which we can't we can't dismiss either that is also very important so we encourage students to be having a healthy balanced diet students to be active living a healthy work life balance and obviously with the social media phones and things like that we just like to try and in an ideal world try and keep those to a kind of minimum although I know it's kind of taken over, but we want obviously students to prioritise their work um, so they're really ready for this year. Social media, I always like to mention social media and just making sure that parents are aware of the social media platforms that their son or daughter is using. Um, and just a couple of things to think about at the bottom, just making sure whether you can actually see their social media, you know exactly what they're doing. And um, we just have to be really mindful of that now. OK, so being in school on time, period one starts at 8.30 and runs from nine o'clock. It's one of the most crucial parts of the day. They see their form tutor, who is somebody they see every single day. And there are obviously, as I've explained earlier on, lots and lots of different activities um, and important activities that students are doing during that time. Um, and that is also where they receive their personal development curriculum. And we also run assemblies once a week um, during that time as well. So it's really important that students are here on time, ready to learn. So who should parents contact? If you have a subject problem, please contact the teacher or the head of faculty. Any general issues can go to the head of year or the form tutor. If you have any progress issues, you're probably best speaking to the subject or subject teacher or the curriculum lead. You can come to me as well. Uh, Mr. Vermark also deals with progress as well as Ms. Larkin. Careers and further education is Mrs. Mason. Attendance concerns is Ms. Parsley. And anything to do with the student's well-being, stress, anxiety, things like that, then you can come to me. And obviously make sure parents you keep in touch and please update me with any um any change in contact details so we can update our systems. So I hope um, this evening has provided you with lots of information um, for you to take on and we've given you everything that you need to know. But obviously, if there is anything, any questions you have or anything that you're unsure of, then please do get in touch um, with me and I'll answer those questions. Thank you. Bye bye.